Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzle loading. Today we're taking a look at this original percussion Kentucky long rifle by J.H. Johnston. John Henry Johnston, his son James Henry, and grandson John A. were all makers of Pennsylvania long rifles. James was the founder of the well-known Great Western Gunworks in Pittsburgh just after the Civil War. The engraved lock is marked Henry Parker Warranted. The rifle has a blade front and notch rear sights on a browned octagon barrel with J.H. Johnston hand signed behind the rear sight. It is mounted on a full length figured maple stock with brass furniture, including an ornate patch box on the right side, which has a release button in the long toe plate that extends to the rear of the trigger guard. The stock has incised molding along the forend and bottom of the butt and incised carving on the wrist and behind the cheek piece. The stock is decorated with over 20 engraved silver inlays in a variety of designs and has engraved brass furniture. The rifle is equipped with double set triggers and the side plate is inscribed Samuel Speaker. The rifle features a 39 and one quarter inch octagon barrel and measures at a 36 caliber. These later era percussion long rifles are truly works of art and in some respects, by record of some collectors and historians, mark close to, if not the end, of the peak of the muzzleloading era before we transitioned into cartridge and smokeless arms. Starting at the rear and working forward on this ornate percussion rifle, we have a faceted narrow butt plate here that has an iron tip at the top here something different than we see on many rifles of the period. We have a sharply curved brass butt plate, very common for the early to mid 19th century for these kind of long rifles. We have a beautifully ornate windowed brass patch box here, complete with border and decorative engraving, as well as these windows where we get a look at the extremely tight maple, presumably curl, through this stock. These percussion era long rifles represent a transition really from the original or golden age, we'll say, American long rifle into a new form of American long rifle as it begins to transition west. We still have many roots for the American long rifle in Pennsylvania, but we start to see these inlays and these decorative elements being added almost to a point of excess, as some would say, as we move into the Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, and Illinois territories. Our patch box has a release down here in our brass toe plate. The release itself is iron or steel. When depressing the release, our patch box springs open and halts about two thirds of the way. Inside we have our note from 1997 and we have again an unfinished patch box area here. The patch box on this piece is oval in shape and the material looks to have been removed with a set of drill bits and then chisels. Along the toe of the rifle, we have a beautiful rectangular brass toe plate that has matching borders and decorative engraving within it. These long multi-screw set toe plates are very common for this later period. Many times the builder would use this as an extra canvas for more ornamentation like we see in this example. The toe plate runs up to just behind our brass trigger guard here. The trigger guard itself is a faceted trigger guard and is held into the stock with a set of pins that run through the stock, the trigger guard, and out through the stock on the other side. There's no engraving on our trigger guard, but as I mentioned, we do have these beautifully filed or cast and cleaned up with a file facets and shaped elements here. The setting of the set trigger to make the front trigger a hair trigger is just going to decrease the amount of pressure needed to activate the front trigger or primary trigger. Our trigger plate extends back through the secondary bow here in our trigger guard and is held in at the rear with a single screw. 
Transitioning forward here, our wrist area features the first of our silver inlays that are seen throughout the stock. Like many percussion long rifles from the period, these inlays are replicated or duplicated throughout the stock with similar or matching engraving. The wrist on this piece also includes some incised line carving coming down from our crest back through underneath our patch box before terminating just to the rear of our trigger guard and some beautifully incised lined scroll carving there. We also do have a, we also have a beautiful carved molding line here from our butt plate forward to our trigger guard plate, a carryover from the golden age of the American long rifle. As we come forward to our lock area here, I want to make note of the beautiful amount of wear in this section, especially along the tang section of our barrel. Sometimes we see this era of percussion long rifle feature a wear plate behind our drum and nipple assembly on the stock to protect that area of the stock from wear. But on this piece, we simply have some worn wood giving it a beautiful change in color, in my opinion, showing that this piece has seen some wear and some use over the years. You can tell here that the worn section is much brighter in color than the sleeker, darker section on our side plate side. We see this even in contemporary made long rifles that go through a lot of shooting, where this area of the long rifle gets clean and experiences wear from the ignition source in the lock assembly. It's no different on this piece here where we have that same wear pattern emanating in a half circle pattern here from our lock around to the section of the wood. Similar wear on this piece is seen on our lock plate mortise where we have a drastic change in color here. This could just be simply from use over the years or it could also be from cleaning of the lock face and the breech area of this rifle. The breech area of the rifle, or the barrel I should say here, shows an amount of wear that is pretty drastic. We can actually see the facets changing in shape and volume as we go back through the breech area here. Our octagonal barrel lines dip as we get back to the drum and nipple assembly here, showing that some metal has worn away in this section. An area I want to highlight to make a note here that even though we have 20 silver inlays, we have decorative engraving back here on this patch box, this was still a tool that saw some use in the field. Our lock is a simple percussion lock from the period, most likely purchased by Johnston to build this rifle around. It does show some light engraving, but the same wear pattern that we see on the stock has since taken away some of the engraving on the lock plate. On the underside forward of our lock, we can see we have a wear plate installed here. This is a large silver wear plate that features some decorative scroll engraving here. At times, these wear plates were applied due to wear seen by carrying the kind of rifle on horseback, primarily with your rifle slung across the saddle or saddle horn for long journeys. Other historians and gunsmiths note that the wear plates also protect the ramrod channel, where a ramrod drill could have run a little bit wide and cut into the stock profile. And the wear plate covers up those kind of holes. I can't be certain by observation here about the purpose of this wear plate. It's very common in this period of American long rifle to see the wear plate added as an additional artistic canvas though. So this could simply be an applied artistic canvas to implement some more beautiful engraving in the piece. We have four brass ramrod pipes, including our brass entry pipe back here at the rear. The brass of our ramrod pipes matches the brass of our nose cap, as well as our trigger guard, toe plate, patch box, and butt plate. The ramrod and entry pipes feature some facets and wedding bands at either end. 
in between our barrel channel and our ramrod channel on this piece, we have a decorative molding that is a wide molding cut into the stock. It's interesting. This molding cuts through the ramrod pipe pins and terminates around each of these silver inlays in the stock. We have a beautiful low silver blade front sight and a brass nose cap at the end. Once again, this is a 36 caliber barrel. Flipping around to our side plate side, we have a matching four stock area down to our inlays. Back here with our brass side plate, we have multiple screws holding this plate in, two smaller screws at the front and the rear, and a single large lock bolt visible here, traveling through the stock, connecting to our lock, holding the lock to the stock. Again, the brass side plate is engraved with a name, possibly of a one-time owner or client of this builder and rifle, though it's hard to determine when the name on that end could have been added. It's important to note that just before our rear sight, as we're speaking about names here, towards the breech, we have Jay Johnston on the barrel in the common place where we see the gunsmith's name signed on their work. Much like the patch box on the lock side of this rifle, the butt stock rear of our side plate here is an, an element or a canvas for artistic expression of the maker. We have beautiful incised line carving flowing from the crest of this rifle down into our cheek piece here. On top of our cheek piece, we have a beautiful federal eagle engraved into an oval silver plate here. The eagle is atop his striped shield. This eagle and eagles like it are very common motif for this late percussion era long rifle. We see this on many, many Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky bound rifles for the period. We have some molding lines separating our cheek piece from the rest of the stock, and again, another silver inlay below that. To the rear of our cheek piece, we get another carryover from the golden age of American long rifles, where we have some incised line carving here with scrolls and other shapes. There is some recessed carving here, but it's not nearly as deep as we see in some of the highly carved golden age American long rifles. Most of the carving behind this cheek piece is made of, up of simple lines. To the rear of this scroll work, we have our final silver inlay with some elegant curves to the rear and some scalloped points going forward. Long rifles like this are truly a thing of beauty, and I appreciate you coming along on this short tour of this Johnston Percussion American Long Rifle. I'd like to thank the Rock Island Auction Company for giving me the opportunity to share this muzzleloader with you here today. If you'd like to learn more about this and any other antique arms, I encourage you to visit the Rock Island Auction Company YouTube channel to learn more. Once again, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.